So the other day I was researching tissue calcification and stumbled upon an obscure study that completely blew my mind. It's called soft tissue calcification treated with local and oral magnesium therapy. And in it, they looked at 80 patients with calcium deposits in their shoulders, elbows, and hips, as well as calcifications after injuries. The doctors then injected magnesium sulfate, so Epsom salts directly into the calcified areas and also gave a magnesium supplement for several months. And the results were crazy. About 75% of patients improved a lot. So the calcium deposits either disappeared completely or got much smaller and their joints moved better afterwards as well. And no one had any major complications or side effects either. I was super fascinated by these results so I wanted to learn more about the exact protocol they used. But because this was an older study, it was very hard to find specifics. Obviously, don't inject yourself with Epsom salts. This is not something that you should copy at home. But what would be interesting to know is their supplement protocol. We know for sure that they used magnesium lactate for four to six months, which is interesting because nowadays, magnesium lactate is not the most commonly recommended form. Lactate has a calcium binding effect, so maybe that's why they used it. But it might have also been just a research trend at the time because before magnesium glycinate, lactate was more commonly used in studies. As for the dosage, they don't specify it, unfortunately. I was able to find another magnesium study from the same authors where they used 3 grams of magnesium lactate split into 3 1 gram doses. This translates to around 300 to 360 milligrams of elemental magnesium but I can't see how such a dose would get these results in such a short time frame. So they probably used more in the tissue calcification trial. But it does highlight how we can use magnesium not only to protect ourselves against tissue calcification, but to actually reverse it. In fact, a more recent study found that just using oral magnesium was enough to reverse calcium deposits in the organs, tissues, and arteries of rodents. And another team of researchers actually published an article that reviewed dozens of studies that pointed out low magnesium as one of the strongest predictors for calcified arteries and heart disease. So not just for people who already have a higher risk, like kidney patients, but among the general population. Across the board, people with a higher magnesium intake had a lower risk of calcifications and all the issues that come with it, like heart failure, heart disease, and sudden death. I've been saying this for years on my channel, but when used correctly, the right nutrition can potentially break down these calcium deposits in the body that almost all of us develop at some point. The researchers identified two main ways in how magnesium does this. The first is passive interference by blocking crystal formation. You see, calcium deposits in your tissue mostly form as crystals called hydroxyapatite, so the same material found in bone. When phosphate levels rise in the blood, for example from processed foods or kidney dysfunction, then calcium and phosphate can start forming tiny crystals that get stuck in your soft tissue. By the way, the same can happen with oxalic acid and calcium, which then form calcium oxalates that you often see in kidney stones. Magnesium interferes with this process because it binds to phosphate and delays the growth of these calcium phosphate crystals. And later on, when they have already partly formed, it can even turn them into softer, more soluble forms that are called amorphous calcium phosphate, which is easier for the body to deal with. In other words, magnesium acts like a chemical bodyguard. It keeps calcium and phosphate from clumping together. But there was also a second benefit that they noticed, which is even more interesting. The same study found that magnesium can stop smooth muscle cells in your arteries from turning into bone-like cells. That transformation is a key part of vascular calcification. Normally, your arterial walls are made of smooth elastic cells, but under stress, so for example, with a high calcium or phosphate intake, inflammation, or just oxidative damage, those cells can switch identity and start behaving like bone-forming cells. Then they begin producing bone proteins like osteocalcin, and here, magnesium can step in and tell them, stop acting like bone cells and return to your normal form. So again, magnesium isn't just slowing calcification, it's actually reversing the cellular program that drives it. And like I said before, we have the real-world data to back this up. For example, in dialysis patients 
who are at very high risk of calcified arteries. Studies have shown that people with higher magnesium levels have fewer heart problems and lower death rates. Now, I have to say that there are also a few trials where magnesium wasn't as significant, which brings me to the second part of this video. You see, in difficult cases, calcification is not caused by a single missing nutrient. What you have to understand is that a lot of this research focuses on just one nutrient, be it magnesium or vitamin K2, for example, but in severe tissue calcification, the end result is a breakdown of your whole calcium metabolism and not just one nutrient missing. To understand this better, let me explain what happens when you normally eat a calcium rich food like cheese. First, you have digestion. So that depends on healthy stomach acid production, which in turn needs enough zinc, B vitamins, especially B6, and good overall protein intake. Then you have absorption. So calcium then crosses the gut wall with the help of vitamin D receptors. If you're low in vitamin D, absorption is poor no matter how much calcium you eat. And lastly, you have transport and utilization. So once it's in the bloodstream, calcium must be carried by proteins such as albumin, kept in balance with other electrolytes, and guided into bone. This is where magnesium steps in, but also K2, sodium, and potassium. What that means is that many people who develop calcification often don't just have a magnesium or K2 deficiency. They also have other issues like electrolyte imbalances, sluggish digestion, and sometimes also things like vitamin A or boron deficiencies, which also play supportive roles. All of that tilts calcium towards becoming what we call biounavailable calcium that is stuck in tissues but missing from bones. Now, unfortunately, this will only show up in the literature if the researchers stop looking for single nutrients to fix calcifications. Yes, magnesium and vitamin K2 are probably the most important players here and the ones that you should focus on first. But the other parts of your calcium metabolism also should be looked at especially if you're a difficult case. I have a bunch of videos on improving calcium handling that I will link in the description. Again, here's a list of the most important calcium cofactors that you need to be aware of and understand. First, the big four electrolytes. So they always need to be balanced. So calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. Then vitamin K2 is needed to guide calcium in the right parking spots in your body. Then we also have vitamin A, D, boron, and calcium supporting proteins like albumin and osteocalcin, which we talked about before, but you don't want that in your arteries, but in your bones. And of course your skeleton also needs mechanical stress. So weight bearing exercises like walking, lifting, light jumping. These literally signal your body to park calcium in the right places and no supplement can replace that signal. So what I want you to understand is that you need to look at this system as one machine that has different parts and that should all be working at an optimal rate. Once you understand this, optimizing your diet and supplement plan becomes a lot easier. Again, I will link related videos in the description along with my recovery program that goes into way more detail when it comes to nutrient testing, diet and supplementation and how to put all of these pieces together. A lot of beginners are overwhelmed by the nutrient interactions out there and the program shows you step by step how to see through that and it also gives you a roadmap for getting started and optimizing your health. Remember, fixing tissue calcification isn't about throwing random supplements at the problem, it's about rebuilding the whole system. So take your time, follow these steps and then you will start to see real progress in both your bone strength and your overall cardiovascular health.